My name is Carlos. I work for Amnesty International in Spain. Um, um, and also, uh, my name is uh, Shannon uh, Girotticano. I work for CompuCom. Uh, actually, we met uh, just um, because of this talk. We <laughs> didn't not met each other before. And it was because um, I wanted to share uh, a set of tools that I discovered and I didn't know uh, a few years ago. But I discovered them, and uh, they have changed the way I do a lot of things in Amnesty. So I wanted to share them, because maybe all the people uh, could find them useful too. So I suggest the presentation, and they contact me, because they are also using that integration tools. The, in fact, they are using the same uh, kind, uh, the, the, the same tools. Yes. So in a different way, but the same tools. So we thought it would be nice to put everything together. And what we are going to do is more or less uh, a talk that has three parts. The first one is uh, like um, we want to show what are that integration tools uh, through an example. Uh, I mean, I guess uh, I don't know if have you ever played with the, that any kind of that integration tools? Has anyone a few experience? Okay, a few of you have experience. Um, uh, well. I think the best way to see that, to, to get, an, get an idea of what it is, is just see it working. So we decided to try a kind of presentation of live presentation. So we are going to try to uh, actually do the things. Uh, the slides are going to be just um, some helpful resource, but we are going to actually use Tantaho integration tools. Um, then I'm going to show you the approach that we are having in Amnesty. How are we uh, using Pentaho integration tools? Uh, we have uh, basically we have developed a way to interact with the CVCRM API in a way that is um, I can say that uh, an advanced user would be able to use it because it not it doesn't require um, coding. And then we are going to see the, the Shannon approach, which is uh, intended to be for developers, because you need to actually know how to develop, but it allows you to go further. So if you are doing something and with uh, my approach and you find a limit, uh, with his approach, you're probably going to be able to uh, continue. Um, and as I told you, for the f well, uh, before, um, before starting, I'm going to just uh, tell you how to start. If you, if you go home and you say, OK, I have seen the presentation. It was cool, but I want to do that at home so I can try. And I can actually start seeing how it is. Uh, first thing you have to do is download this tool, Pentaho.integration. You have the link uh, down. Um, you will need uh, to have the Java runtime environment in your uh, in your um, computer to, to run it. Uh, and if you have downloaded it, uh, you don't. It, it doesn't require installation. It's just you download this uh, package you have uh, here. You download it. You uncompress it, and there is a script called Spoon, which if you're using um, if you're using Windows is Spoon.bat. If you're using Mac or uh, Unix is Spoon.sh. And if you run this, if you double click it, uh, you will see that, the, the, the window I'm showing you here. And this is uh, the, the tool we are actually going to use. So let's start with the first example. Uh, we have um, actually uh, written everything in, this, uh, in the wiki. So uh, the contents of all the presentation are available in a, in a wiki format. And I think it's cool because especially the first thing that we're going to do this example is like a first um, first approach to the to the tool, and um, uh, we are going to see that working now. But then you probably will, if if you're interested and you think it's useful, you will probably want to do that at home. So you have uh, either the the file uh, here at the end uh, you can download with all the transformation, all the files, uh, the sample files I'm using, etc. Uh, and also you have the, the step by step how to um, create every transformation every uh, the same thing we're going to do here are you know wiki page so you can see them okay um, but let me tell you about the example that we are going to do it's uh, I, I wonder I was thinking if it uh, was a good idea to do something um, uh, real to show you uh, an example of how are we actually using Pentaho.integrations uh, in Amnesty. 
but actually I think our processes are complicated. So it was, if it's the, 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 pr the purpose of this first part of the talk is to get started with the tool, to see that working, see them working. So it's better if the, uh, the process we do is an easier process. But uh, at the same time, I want it to be something more or less real. So I designed uh, a case where um, I'm going to invite you to imagine that you work as a CVCRM implementer. It's probably a lot of you actually are uh, implementers. Um, and uh, someone calls you from an organization and says, hey, um, uh, we have an IT guy who works with us, a volunteer or, or a um, consultor or whatever, that um, is helping us with the uh, digitalization of uh, of our members, of the members that we do when we are uh, doing face-to-face -face or whatever. So we have this, info that he's IT guy, so we, he told us that why don't we try to automate the process so uh, he can uh, write files or whatever, CSV files, or, and give us these files through, I don't know, an FTP, for instance, and we can process them and um, get all of these files and insert them into our uh, MySQL members table. Um, and I want you to imagine that this is going to be something that you're going to do periodically. Uh, this person is going to receive the papers, he's going to digitalize, he's going to create the CSV files with the members' information, and he's going to send us this information through, he's going, he has an FTP, he will leave, leave uh, the files there, and we want, to, we want a job or, or a software that will. And let me show you. Um, I don't, I don't know if you can actually see uh, the text, but anyway, um, maybe if, okay. Uh, the first part we want to, uh, uh, the first thing our software should do is read the um, configuration, our configuration file where we are gonna say what is our FTP server, our user, our password, uh, where do we want to store the files that we want to download? Um, the MySQL, MySQL parameters are where is our server, the user password, etc. So uh, we don't have to hard code all of that and we can create something that actually works as a piece of software that we can uh, give to someone and they can just touch the configuration file and it will work for them. Um, then it will, uh, with the, when it has read, read the um, configuration files, it will connect to this um, FTP server. It will start downloading files, and we will consider that uh, that is part of the, still of the requirements. We will consider that the files in this FTP folder are the files that we haven't still downloaded. So if we download a file successfully, we want to delete it after download. If we, when we already have uh, the, the local copy. And then there is a second part of the, um, of the process, which is, okay, I already have the, the files in a, a local folder, and I want to uh, open these files, or, uh, each of them, read the content of our members, and insert it in a MySQL table uh, with uh, this uh, particular uh, thing here that if the email was already in the database, I will update its record. If it wasn't, I will create it. Um, and then when I have uh, created properly and uh, successfully a contact or updated it in my database, I want to, uh, all the contacts, sorry, uh, of one of these files. When I have already processed one of these files, I will also want to remove it from the local folder so I know that the local folder uh, has the files that I haven't still uh, imported. So this is the requirements, and uh, this is someone that I have, uh, before I knew that integration tools, I have done uh, development like that uh, a lot of times. I'm sure you have also done it. Uh, the thing is that um, it's much simpler where with, a, with a tool like the one we wanna see. So the first thing is to, um, to write down the parameters, like uh, this file we are supposed to have, uh, we'll, where we will say uh, this, where are our FTP server, where are our uh, MySQL server. And the cool thing is that um, actually uh, the tool we're using, um, sometimes I will say Kettle. Kettle is a short name for Pentaho.integration. In Pentaho.integration there is a file called um, 
kettle uh, dot properties, which is uh, uh, a text file in your home uh, directory that actually is going to be read by kettle and he's going to take a look at uh, this key and value um, lines. Uh, it's a file that only supports key and value, but actually it, it's pretty useful because you can create uh, your uh, whatever you're going to do. In this case, it's uh, this process that we read the FTP and whatever. And uh, we will be able to create them in a way that we can share them because uh, our information is not hard coded. In our uh, server information, users, passwords are not with the software. So, um, as I told you, uh, let's. Um, Open the, this is the interface. What th this is what you see when you open uh, so I told you this uh, I spoon, this is script. And uh, let's start with the first uh, the first thing we need to know is uh, the two thing two kind of things that you can create with the Pentaho that integration and are transformations and jobs. I'm gonna just open one of each one of each. So um, the difference uh, is that basically, I'm gonna um, just uh, briefly show you the main difference, is that jobs are supposed to be things like, uh, I am going to run this, SS, this this command line, or I am going to connect to this server, I am gonna check if this table exists, I am gonna create this table, um, things like that. And transformations are more the things that you already do with data. I mean, if you have already downloaded something, you, have, you will see the everything um, and you won't even realize if uh, you, you won't, for me, with the data integration tool, uh, connect to a MySQL table or get data from a text file, it's exactly the same. I won't realize the difference. Um, so uh, transformation are everything you can do with data. I take from data from a source, I update it, uh, I modify it, and then I put it again on the database or I put it in another database. That is what you do with transformations. And uh, there is also one practical difference. This, this was a theoretical one, like the basics of uh, the differences. And the practical one is that if you try to do something with a job and you, um, for instance, let's start with the first thing we want to do is uh, FTP connection. Uh, we want to get files from an FTP. If you take a look, you can also uh, use uh, secure FTP, blah, 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 a lot of things. Uh, but in this case, we want to connect to a, a FTP. Uh, if I now save that and try to run it, he will say, no, this is a job, and you need to tell me where do I have to start. Even if it, there is was just uh, one thing here, it's mandatory for jobs to have a start. And start is just one kind of uh, thing that you can drag and drop. As you have seen, what I have been doing is uh, taking things from here, which are design, are all the tools that we have uh, uh, available, and I drag and drop them. That is the way you interact with the user interface. So if I want to get a file, I go to file transfer, <coughs> I get the component get, and either I double click it or I drag and drop it there. And then if I make double click here, I can see the parameters actually. So I can say, okay, my server is this one, my username is this one. If this is someone that I'm only going to run once, uh, there's no problem ab about hard coding it. I can actually write the IP here. But uh, as we have been told to use the parameters, I'm going to show you one tip, which is very cool. And it's uh, if you press uh, control space, it is written in the help, control space, uh, you will see the, actually the variables that you have in, the, in this file that I told you, the kettle properties. So I don't have to open the file and read it uh, if what I'm going to need are uh, keys and values, I can just edit my kettle uh, properties file and I can use the variables here. So I'm going to uh, select the FTP server, the username, uh, the password. I'm just saying which are my uh, keys and he will take the values when I run the process. Uh, so with that, I can already test the connection and he says that the connection is okay. And then I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to uh, use the remote uh, folder, which is FTP X4 folder. And uh, I want to download all the files that is, uh, I didn't tell you, but this in the requirements. They say that they want to download the files uh, 
If the connection to the FTP was successful, we must download every file with the prefix members. Okay, so I had this uh, prefix in my, in my uh, configuration, okay? File prefix. Uh, so when uh, I am asked, uh, uh, now I'm being asked uh, for, if I don't write anything here, it means that he will go to this folder and download everything. Here is like the filter, so I will say the filter is uh, file prefix and whatever after it. And then I have to say where do I want to download them. I have also, that, that here I have, doing, I have done something just uh, to show you how you concatenate two. Uh, so I, may, I, I am working always in this local path which is uh, my CVCon folder in my documents. But I don't want to download here the files, I want to download in all the files which I only call downloads. So I have to construct the mm, URL uh, by concatenating both of them and it's pretty easy because you, the only thing you have to do is also control space, you choose the first, first one which was local path or something like that and then I want to do, I want to add the following which is control space and the second one was lo uh, FTP local folder. Uh, if you put your mouth, your mouse over uh, your variable you see actually what it's doing. And that's how I can see that he's concatenating, but I miss uh, a slash here. So now it looks like properly, okay? So um, only thing I miss now is um, if I check a little bit, I'm, I'm not gonna use the other tabs, so I don't need them now. You can take a look if you want. But uh, the only parameter that I think is gonna be useful for us if you take a look is this one is remove files after retrieval. He already takes care uh, of uh, the fact that the file has to be successfully downloaded before removing it, but if you mark this, he will already do the job. So I'm gonna say, okay, have you, uh, uh, as you have seen, what I have done is just added the FTP, uh, get FTP files uh, step. I have um, chosen the parameters that I have already in my kettle file and uh, I already can save that because that's already useful for me. Um, uh, I'm going to save that as that file. Okay. And if I hit play, uh, if you forget that this is a job and you need, as I told you, a starting point, if I hit play, he will tell me. I mean, there's no problem. Uh, he's going to say me that he cannot run this because if I go to the job, he will say, uh, couldn't find a starting point. So I know that I have to say him because it's a job, I have to say where he has to start. And uh, when you have uh, more than one uh, step, uh, if you, well, I'm gonna do that with drag and drop, I feel comfortable doing that. If you press uh, shift and you drag and drop, you can connect them. It means that it's something you will, we will do a lot of time. And then I used to add a uh, success which means, just, I, I'm gonna, it's not really mandatory, but I'm, I'm showing you why. If I connect now, I can change. Uh, this is, um, after the start, in, I, I cannot, do, if I click here, it doesn't change. I, it, after the start, the start is uh, just a way to say that where will this job uh, actually start, but uh, it cannot fail, the start point. This uh, um, can, actually fail because the uh, FTP server can be down or uh, I can lose my internet connection or whatever. So if I connect this with the success or whatever other step and the way I connect them is through this uh, green uh, arrow, it means that the second part will on only be executed if the first one, if the previous one was uh, successfully executed. Otherwise, it will run an, er an error or whatever. So. I'm actually going to uh, run it now, just to see that it doesn't, okay? Now it runs, okay? And uh, what we have done, done um, is uh, actually, uh, I don't know, do I have it? It's actually the first part. Because uh, what we have done, I can, I, I will run it now. Uh, it already reads from the configuration file uh, it connects to the FTP, it checks if there are multiple files, it will start downloading each of them and removing the ones that have been successfully downloaded. Uh, so all of this part 
has already been developed. I'm gonna show it to you uh, actually with, with the files. I'm gonna put a lot of files. Uh, well, the structure was, uh, I'm skipping a, f uh, a few of the details because they are actually in the, um, in the wiki pi page I told you. For instance, you have a sample of the file. This is the structure. So I have a lot of files, 10 files in particular, uh, which with uh, 100 records each. So I will upload them to this FTP folder that I was supposed to, um, to download the files from. That is the job that our volunteer was supposed to do. He has his FTP server, he dig digitalizes the data and put it there. So now it starts our process. I'm going to show you uh, before, um, I'm going to show you the tables, uh, the MySQL table so you can see. Uh, sorry. Okay, I'm going to. No, no, drop. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to recreate it with the. Uh, okay, I'm going to just. Uh, make sure that it's totally empty. I shouldn't, yeah, I could have just emptied the table. Okay, the table is totally empty, okay? We don't have any record here. And the only thing I will do now is hit play again, okay? I hit play, it will, um, sorry. I'm showing you the table and I should be showing you the local folder because I, I still haven't done anything with my uh, with my, uh, my SQL, I'm only downloading the files, okay? That is what I should have shown you. Uh, I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna remove th that because I didn't do that. Um, I'm gonna upload the files once again. Now they are not here because they were successfully downloaded, so it removed them. Okay, I have the files in the FTP server. I hit play, okay. And now files are no longer here because the, he downloaded them all right, and they are here, okay? They are in my local folder. So the first part is done. I can, if you want, we can do a few things like uh, trying to put bigger files so we can stop the FTP server while he's downloading one of the files. And you can see that he will download a few of the files, the others will be kept there. So the process is more or less stable in the sense that you can stop it, uh, start it whenever, and it will still work. Uh, now we were going to do the other part, uh, the part where we uh, are going to read, read files from the, from the um, local folder and insert or update in our uh, MySQL table and then remove the files that we have imported. That was the second part we, are, we were supposed to do. And to do so, I will do a transformation because I already have the files and uh, transformations are, as I told you, the, the tool to to read data, to manage uh, the data uh, as it was a flow of data, um, uh, independently of the tools uh, or the sources or the targets. And that is what we are going to do now. I'm going to uh, start with, um, I think it's a uh, get a STV CSV file, uh, I hope. Uh, yeah, red file set, okay. I will start. Start by uh, where is red file? No, it's not red file. It's uh, text file input. Uh, wait a second. Um, Uh, text file input, sorry. Oh, sorry. Mm. I have to correct the wiki because it's a red uh, text file input and I called it red file. Okay, text file input is, um, uh, well, in transformations, I don't need to put a start. I can put even several starts. You will see that uh, after that. Um, well. I will, I will read a file and for the beginning uh, I recommended you in the wiki if you take a look to actually place at least one file in the local folder, at least one, if the structure is always going to be the same. So um, I can uh, do what I'm going to do now, which is I 
uh, will specify this. Uh, okay, I will spe specify. I will look for one of these files. I'm sorry, I gotta go right, browse, and um, I am supposed to uh, read every file in this folder, and then uh, for every file, look at the content of every file. But it's easier if I uh, just read one of the files and then I change it, I put before a component that will multiply that for every file in any folder. It's just going to be easier to do that that way. So I'm going to add this. Um, what am I doing? Oh, yeah. I'm going to choose one of the folder, one of the files, sorry. Uh, Okay, I'm going to choose one of the files, and uh, then I'm going to say that actually the separator was, uh, this is uh, requirements, I mean, uh, the structure of the files is, they are separated by uh, types, they have a first line which is the header, that is just, uh, well, the, file, the, the date format is uh, day, ma uh, no, month, day, um, and year, etc. So I'm gonna. That is the kind of things that this component needs to know. What is a separator? Uh, what's encoding? Uh, these kind of things. Okay. Uh, the fact that it has a header, I can say yes or not. And once I have said him what, how is the file, and I have given him one file, uh, one URL, uh, not URL, one path. I can go to the structure. I'm supposed to say him, okay, the, these are the fields of the file. But as long as I have told him where the file is and how to interpret, uh, the, how to separate each field, he can uh, actually go to the file and look for me. And I don't have to specify the name of the columns. Even you can um, let him to guess the data types. I normally don't do that. Uh, I recommend you doing it just, for instance, for dates or uh, things that you are going to operate with. But it's better if you just read the parameters. They are, they are actually strings in the text file. So if you just read them and then you um, do whatever you want to do. I mean, uh, if you want to transform a an, an string to a number, it's better if you do that after. So you separate the, the actually we used to talk about ETL processes which stands for extra extraction, transforming, and loading. So you're supposed to, to separate as much as you can these phases. So you read, then transform, and then uh, load again. So I'm just going to change it, specify the format for the date. It's the only one that is useful for me. Uh, so the, I can uh, already, when I transform, I can do already operations with the date. Well, OK, I have, I can already do a preview and that will uh, be useful because now you know that's where I will start working in transformations. You see actually the data. Uh, so you, when you transform, what you do is you put another step after that that will do something with this data. I will do that now. And uh, it will be, um, you, can, you will be transforming. I, you can add a column, for instance, uh, which is a calculation between two columns that you have. And you can see that, actually, with the preview. And you can go step by step. And you see how the, the um, flow, that is what we call flow of data, how was it in the, um, in the first step? I'm sorry, but I think I have a, uh, I don't know. Screen. Yeah, I'm sorry. So you will see that uh, in this step. If, if you have a step after that, you can click on the second one, and you can see that it has the additional column. So you can actually see if you're doing your job as you were supposed to or not. Um, well, next thing we want to do with this um, with this data we have um, is the to in, to put it on our MySQL directly. So it's uh, kind of, uh, no, it's table, table output is the word, no, insert update, insert, we were supposed to insert if it existed or update uh, otherwise, so this is a component where, um, okay, we'll connect it, 
And uh, here, we are supposed to choose um, our uh, connection. I don't have my connection, so I will create it. Um, hello, OK. I will create my MySQL connection, so I can use it in, if I have multiple transformation, I will be able to use the same connection. And I will also, not local. I will also uh, use the parameters that I ta that I have taken from the from the text file. Uh, doesn't want to. Well, I'm going to write them. Um, server database user. And that is going to be you're going to like it. <laughs> because it writes uh, actually uh, <laughs> this asterisk, so I cannot see it. But I'm going to see if it's working. OK, it works. So now, from now on, I can have a lot of steps that uh, actually use uh, mm, connections. Uh, either this is, this is a MySQL, but it could be whatever connection. And uh, if I add another one, I will be able to actually, um, for instance, if I add this uh, table output, he will also ask me for the connection, and I can also use the same connection. So that's why you create it like separately. You don't don't use to write the parameters, the MySQL parameters, whatever. You only create the connection, and then you use it a lot of times. Okay, the table is called uh, members, and I will hit uh, here. I will say this is an insert update component. It means that it will create or update uh, using this condition. And for me, it's going to be, uh, I mean, it's comp the comparison is between a table field from, the, from, the, from this connection, from this MySQL, and a string field, which means something that came from the previous step, which is something that is in the text file. OK, so this is a condition. See, this is what he's going to do. So if the emails of the stream and the email of the table are the same, he's going to update. Otherwise, he's going to create the record. And I'm going to do the mapping. Mapping means. Um, that I am going to actually associate the fields of the stream with the fields of the, um, of the table. Um, actually, if you use the same names, he will know what they are. Um, I don't know how did he know the name was first name, but he guessed it. Cool. Uh, <laughs> OK, so actually, that's already what we wanted to do. I'm going to do that with, the, with this first uh, file. I'm, I'm going to save it. Uh, I'm sorry, I know what I'm doing. I'm going to save it here. OK. And I have already one of the files specified in my text. So we have, if I hit play now, it should read the contents in this particular file. I'm having problems with the resolution. Oh. Uh, it will read the contents in, in this particular file and insert or update in this uh, table. OK, the table uh, was empty. I'm going to check it again. Refresh, no records here, and uh, I am gonna just hit play. Okay, are you sure you wanna save? Yeah, okay, so I'm supposed to have now the one, okay, the records of uh, this file. Each file was 100 records, so you have the content of one of the files, but now I want to modify uh, this process so I'm not only uh, getting uh, one of the files, but all the files in, the direct in this directory. So this is get um, oh, files, uh, get files, no, get files from receipts, no. How is it called? Uh, uh, get file. How is it called? Get list of files, okay. Okay, I'm going to, I probably didn't use the right name this time either. I'm going to check for it. Uh, get file names. Okay, sorry. Okay, there is a component called get file names, which uh, I can use. Okay, I'm sorry, I put it twice. 
what I'm going to use to, uh, s I, I can just specify a folder and he will actually read all the files in, oh, I'm sorry what I'm doing, uh, he will read all the files in this folder um, and he will pass the name of the files to the next uh, step which is uh, uh, the one that will actually read every, every file. I'm going to connect them and I'm going to say um, which is my uh, my folder, my file or director, which is the same thing that we specified in the target directory in the FTP step before. Uh, so it's export folder slash, uh, no, export folder, sorry, local folder, local folder, and then uh, FTP, exactly the opposite. I think it was like that. Yeah, it was like that. So if I do that, I'm going to read everything. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I have a prefix. I only want to process the files with the name starting with uh, members, whatever. So actually, if I hit preview, I have all the files that are actually in this folder. And now I just have to modify the, the step that I, that I uh, wrote here. I was reading one file. I will not do that and I will mark this uh, check here that say the file names came from a uh, previous step. Okay, and the, the mm, step it will uh, read uh, the, the names for is a previous one, get, fil get, get file names and get the I fill in the input to use as field name. I think it's called uh, actually file name, but I'm not sure. Um, it's actually fine. So, okay. So I'm gonna say okay, and now if I hit, I'm just gonna hit play fast because I'm taking <laughs> Chanin's time. It's okay. So, if I hit play, it actually. Uh, has read, and now I can see that there are 1,000 inserts or updates. If I go to the table and I hit refresh, I have 999 records because one of the records were du was duplicated. I made it in purpose. So uh, he inserted uh, 999 and one of them just updated it. So this is a way uh, we have already uh, read the file, read every file in the local folder, and now we want to finish by um, down, down, um, removing the local files that we actually have already um, processed. So that is the last part of our example. Um, no, um, sorry, I don't want to open the one that I have just done. I want to open the one I'm creating. Okay, so we are going to create a general job that fir the first thing it's going to do is uh, it's going <coughs> to execute the job that we created, the first job, which was the, F the one that uh, read the FTP files. Okay, I'm going to look for it. Uh, I called it uh, download files. This is the first job we made. Then we're going to run the transformation we have created. So actually, I'm going to put the transformation to and connect it. Uh, as I told you, I could, this will, the transformation, I mean, it will only process the files in the local folder if the first step was right. I can choose what I, I can process whatever is in the local folder, even if there was a problem with the FTP, because maybe some files were right, I can decide. I will actually only process uh, the local folder if the first step was right. So uh, I'm going to choose the uh, next, next thing we created, uh, the, the, this process. And now I'm going to do something um, uh, which is I need to remove the files that has been successfully processed. Um, so first I'm going to open again this uh, process that I have and I will um, 
I will show you uh, the, I want to see the stream, so I'm going to play it again, and I'm going to show you what I meant when I told that we talk with, the, we work with streams, is that uh, I have run the process now, so it has read this, um, the first step has uh, read the folder, and I can see what this step uh, returned to the second step. This is what it had. There is here no information still about the data into the files. That is, if I click here, so now you can see that the stream is completely different, and now I have high information here uh, from all the files. Okay. Um, actually, I can add here. I'm sorry. sorry. Um, I can. D I know where it is. Additional output field. Uh, no, it's not the same. Include field name in output, and I'm going to say field name. And uh, actually, if I hit play now, it's going to be better than before because I will have an additional column in the second step. Okay. Please run. Okay, if I go now, okay, the first step only gave me the file names. Second step, a step gave me the data and also, oh, there is no there. Please. I'm sorry, I, I didn't save it. Okay. Okay, so if now I go to the second step, I have the data, okay, but I also have from which file does every record came from. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to use actually this information just uh, in a step which is called uh, set result whatever, which set files in result, which is actually for uh, doing what we want. It is. Uh, a way to communicate with all the, wh what I want to do is delete files. I told you that is something you do actually in jobs, not in transformations. So if I want to communicate from, the, uh, from this uh, transformation with the job that is calling this transformation, I can do that through the result of, the, um, of this uh, transformation. So I'm gonna say that I want to put the, actually the file name in the result and then when I'm uh, working with the transformation, I'm going to say that I want to do something with this result, which is process result names. Uh, well, I could do directly the delete, but I want to show you this one because it's cooler. <coughs> this is something I only want to do if the transformation successfully uh, finished. And what I want to do with them is I could copy them or move them to a folder called uh, processed files or whatever. In this case, I want to delete them. So this is all the parameters. And if now I hit the job, I'm going to remove everything once again. Uh, sorry. Empty. I don't have any record now in the table. I will upload all the files to the FTP server. I will make sure that I don't have anything in my local folder. We, that was the initial schema. So if I now hit play, um, that is actually processing everything. And if I now go to the FTP server, there are no files, which means he processed them. If I go to the local folder, there are no files. It means it, that there are no pending files to process to the MySQL. It's a good signal. And if I go to the MySQL, <coughs> I will already have the, my 999 records, which was actually what I wanted. So now, uh, I had a second part, but I think it's better if we go to the channels one, uh, maybe, yeah, or? Yeah, that's OK. Yeah. yeah. So um, we're going to jump to the channel, channels part. And if we have time, we will see the other.
So, okay, guys, stay with me. Uh, everyone can hear me uh, okay, right? Uh, right, so my name is Chanan, so I work with CompuCorp. So I, I have like uh, 10 minutes left. So I try to show you how to use like a uh, panel to, to import the data to CV, which is like using uh, CV AP, uh, CVCM API. Uh, what we cover is the, uh, what is CVCM API? And we're gonna use the uh, REST interface to call a uh, CV API. And also we use uh, a a API chain, which is I'm gonna talk about like what is the API chaining. And also, yeah, Carlo just talk about the, what is the Pendaho data integration and how we're gonna use the uh, REST client step, which is like the, the block that we drag and drop and then call the uh, REST function, which is called the CVCM API, and also just the demo. So I suppose uh, yesterday we have like session, what is CVCM API? So anyone like, uh, can raise your hand if you know like a CVCM API? Right, so lots of you guys know. So I'm not gonna talk about much, <coughs> so just like, CVCM uh, gives you the uh, power to getting data from uh, CVCM API, which is like quite useful from uh, the third party system. Like if you want to create like a uh, new system and use the data in CV, so you can call API to get those data. And that's the link if you can try. And uh, CVCM API also has like options to call, like you can call this uh, API from PHP or from JavaScript from smart template. And also you can call that API from the REST interface, which is like, how, how would you call the service from the web method? I mean, you can find uh, the information there in the link. And uh, the next one is like how you set up the CVCM API to actually like enable you to call REST interface. So first of all, you need to have a URL of the CVCM on your site and uh, normally we use like post method to, to call uh, the REST interface and parameters. So you have to have like site key, which is you can find in CVCM setting and also API key. So this one you have to update the record uh, in, in contact record. So right now it's like you have to update the admin record and put the API key in that record in order to let CVCM uh, allow you to call CVCM API from REST uh, interface. And also you specific the entities that you want to get, or uh, you also specific the action you want to create or get or delete or yeah, whatever. And in this part, like we're gonna use a JSON to put parameters in, in the uh, CVCM API. And yes, so right now I'm gonna talk about the uh, API chaining. What is API chaining? Normally, CVCM API just let you call uh, getting data from like one entity. Let's say if you want to uh, get one contact, so just put, uh, you can specific the, specify the parameters by or just want to get one contact with this ID, so it return you just a contact. Or if you want to create uh, the contact, you can call just one API call to create one contact. But API chaining is like, you want to create and update multiple entities in CVCM, uh, in CVCM system with just one API call. And the way to do that is you have to put all parameters in JSON and also you need to specify the referent values. Uh, this is an ex example. So this JSON document they have, you want to create uh, one contact and also one email address for him and also address and phone numbers and if, if, if he has like a contribution in, in, that, uh, in, in that package, if he donates some, some amount of money, so you can also create contribution entity as well in just one API call. And also you can add membership to him. Uh, he can have like a membership, uh, let's say like uh, just one value. As you can see the uh, JSON document, the reference value is like here, so you can specific like, oh, uh, you want to create one email, one uh, address, and if you have to link that, uh, that address with the contact, you have to specify the reference value, like the uh, dollar sign value dot ID. Yeah. So when you send <coughs> this set, uh, JSON document to CVCM API, it will create first uh, the contact, and second part is create email address, and also at, uh, 
The third part, we create the address entities and phone and contribution. This just uh, refrain the contact ID from the reference values. And uh, down here, you can do uh, see the reference. Actually, this information is in the uh, CVCM uh, wiki, so you can find it easily from the uh, from Google or something. And also, Pendahol. So I use Pendahol to uh, call call the API from the REST interface. So uh, Carlos has talked about that. And this is the uh, REST uh, client step to call the CVCM API. So you just grab and dot those steps and then collect uh, and put the uh, parameters like URL, so your CVCM site, and also you have to specify uh, you're gonna use post method, and also you have to uh, specify what is the result that come out, uh, and is that the example of the uh, the whole transformation, like a simple one. Okay. Uh, so next thing I'm gonna show you the demo how to call a CVCM API chaining with REST interface. Yeah. So as you can see now is the uh, site. I have one CVCM uh, fresh, uh, f fresh site, new site. This site has only one contact, which is admin contact. It's the empty site. And uh, you can call API. As you can see, this is the uh, JSON document, which is just show you in the slide. And I use this too. This is the uh, Chrome extension called Advanced REST Client. So you can use this too to uh, specific, uh, specify the URL of the system. And you can uh, add parameters. So in this one, I will show you, I will call uh, CVCM API to create one contact. And I specific, I specify entities, action, uh, API keys, and also site key. And it's gonna uh, put JSON file in the parameters and try to run that. So first of all, this is JSON document. I need to combine it into one line and put it in here. So you just call this API. This is the results come out from CV API. And if you go to see CRM site, and try to search the contact. And yeah, so one contact is coming up. Uh, so this contact has address, phone number, and one contribution, which is a lot. <laughs> and also one membership. And so CV API create you the activities of uh, the contact, which is quite nice. So five entities, uh, five entities has been created by just one API call. And uh, right, so the next one I'm gonna show you uh, the how, how to use those uh, API call within Pentaho. This is the transformation in uh, Pentaho, which I used. Uh, actually, I should show you uh, this thing first. This is the Excel file that I have. So you, uh, this Excel file is like you just uh, export from uh, other system. So you have your contact, you have ID, uh, salutation, first name, last name, like the detail of the contact data. And if you go back to Pendle, so we, you can see like this step. Uh, this step is called uh, Excel input, which is will read those uh, Excel files. And the next four is like you just want to look up the ID and try to match the ID. For example, it's like type of the email address or something. And the next one is like you want to transform the data Let's say you want to transform the uh, format date, change format date of the birth date. And sometimes you have to map the data. Let's say this record has uh, no subscription and you want to map Y into one and N into zero or something. And also 
uh, yeah, this one is the flow of looking the ID. Right, so I'm gonna run this uh, transformation to show you the uh, results. So <coughs> yep. One of the things that's really nice about Cacao is that it streams the data, so it's not like a batch thing where it waits for one step to complete and goes to the next, it actually sends the rows through. So at any given time, it's actually flowing the entire direction. And if you notice that one of the steps tends to be slow, you can actually increase the number of copies of the run and think of its job by multi-threads that one step. So this is a rate limiting step where like reading the file or looking at the database is done to do that. Yes. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> so you can show them the context in CB now? Yep. Okay. So uh yeah. Let's go back to C V site. Uh, by contact. And maybe just do and search. Yes, as you can see, the, uh, lots of data is coming up from the transformation. And also, we've got a uh, contribution as well, entities. And membership. Yep. And the flow uh, keep running. The good thing about this flow is like you can debug the flow if you have some issues. Let's say if you want to see the log file of the flow, so you can see the log. If you want to see data like uh, in step by step, let's say you want to see data in uh, Excel file, what happened there? Just click on preview data, and you will see the data that come out from the uh, XML, uh, uh, Excel file step. Yep. Any question? Um, I'm surprised you're not using the system uh, input output set. So yeah, I didn't have time to talk about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, if I can, can I uh, yep. just show? No, no, the. the oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I, I skipped the sec. I told you the presentation was three uh, parts, and I skipped the second one because I the first one took me uh, very long. But actually, um, for simple tasks, for, him, for instance, for what he have, he have done, he has uh, chained a lot of API calls. Uh, and uh, if you want to do complex things like that, uh, the the um, you will need to be able to create the JSON with the uh, with the chaining or whatever. Yeah. But if what you're gonna do are simple things like uh, just get, I don't have the file here. Yeah, okay. Just uh, take a list of contacts from CVCRM, for instance. We have developed this uh, this component, which is a CVCRM input. Input means I I'm going to take data from CVCRM into the flow step. There, there is also an output that allows me to create things or, or update things. Um, I have to give him the parameters, like my REST URL, site key, API key, etc. Uh, I can choose uh, the entity that I'm going to work with, and uh, actually it, it's going to do like the API actually does. If I specify an ID, it's going to update this record, otherwise it's going to create a new one. Uh, in this case, I'm sorry, I'm talking about the, that was with the create, I'm with an input component, so I can, I can preview, and uh, actually, as I told you, you don't need uh, development um, uh, skills to uh, use this particular um, step and you can actually hit already hit preview and you can uh, use data from your CVCRM installation uh, directly here, directly to the, um, sorry, um, I don't know, maybe this one is here, yeah, maybe. I'm not seeing the preview, I don't know if they are. 
Well, and, I, and I'm actually not seeing the preview, but I'm going to show it you uh, that uh, working. This transformation, in fact, was to show you uh, that uh, when you are working with um, uh, that integration, you can do a lot of things that are apparently are not only data integration tasks. Take data from an FTP and import the CSV files are obviously a data integration task. But uh, what I'm doing here is use other components that are pretty useful as an RSS output. Uh, that allows me to uh, read in a few contacts from CDCRM uh, with the conditions that I chose. I have chosen. I can export them into an RSS, uh, and that allowed me to do that. I create in my. Um, well, I'm sorry, in my CDCRM, I created a contact group which is called Amnesty International Sections, uh, which has a few contacts already on, on it. Uh, if you take a look at these contacts, I have, um, I'm going to edit it, I have uh, uh, created these custom fields which are called um, show this contact in public web lists, uh, public description so I can uh, actually edit something here. And um, uh, what it does, what I, what, what I have done is this job that creates an RSS just by reading RSS file. Here it is called um, uh, output file. Out it's called uh, whatever custom feeds uh, that section that RSS, which is actually this file. And it means that every time I run this job, this file is going to be updated with information from my CVCRM and in a XML form, in a RSS format. And that is cool because it means that I can use that integration to integrate my uh, CVCRM with external CMS. Not only with the CMS where uh, CVCRM in is installed with, but I have created a WordPress which has no relation with my, with my CVCRM. And using a RSS uh, widget, I'm printing here information that actually came from the context that I have uh, marked here in my CRM as uh, show in public lists or whatever. So it's kind of, you can actually do that. And uh, I, I did that exam example in purpose because to integrate your uh, data from CVCRM into a, an external CMS, I guess that without these tools, you need actually development and probably it's going to be complex even. But with that tools, uh, advanced users are going to be able to do a pretty uh, big number of things without even uh, knowing how to code. Also, within Pentao, it's possible to set up a transformation and, the, and it's built the output step with the JDBC connector. So you could actually do a very, very complicated ETL and then it's built just a layer and then take a look at the database. Uh, we, we didn't say that, but uh, another thing that was, in fact, in the, I, I thought it was in the requirements in the first part, it yeah. was that uh, you got to be able to, you, you are actually able to run every single transformation or every single uh, job you have created from a common line. So, for instance, uh, this uh, update that I have created, this process that I have created that uh, updates in a RSS file from your uh, contacts in CVCRM, uh, I can uh, even go to my, I'm um, sorry, cron tab, which is where I can schedule uh, tasks in, uh, in, um, well, in my computer. And I can write this command, which is called kitchen. If you look at the wiki, you will see what are, what are the commands uh, that allows you to work uh, or execute processes from command line. But actually, it's called kitchen. If you say, what is your, your job, it will uh, run it from a, from a uh, whatever you call it, and um, I think I can just, uh, I have it here, just to show you how you can do that. And that is the, the same process, uh, regener uh, generating a lot of errors, by the way. Um, sorry. Uh, Second. 
this is the process, and now it's generating the file successfully from the command line. So it's exactly the same, uh, same, same uh, thing I was doing with the graphical interface. When you hit place, you can schedule it or whatever. So, so using extension interface, some of the, so we used to have a lot for all data migration, but with that synchronization step, if, if, if you hook that up to Jenkins, you can use really easy ACLs and then have your clients even trigger synchronizations and not give them any access set up a, a Pentel job, have the Jenkins job attached, expose it to logins on the Jenkins side, and then you push a button and it works, or schedule it using Jenkins and whatever schedule you want to do. And then you have the failure also reported in Jenkins and then you trigger an email and notify you. No more questions? Yeah,